when the concert hall UCI in Limerick, sorry, it's UCH in Limerick, that's where we are. And next to me is the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest 1980, 1987. He won the win winning song, sorry, he, he wrote the winning song of 92. It's Johnny Logan. And I wrote the one in 87. As well. Mm -hmm. And I wrote the one in 84, they came second. So uh, sort of, I have a bit of a history. <laughs> Fantastic. How, how is it for you to be back at the Eurovision Spirit here in Limerick now? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, but I, suppose, I suppose it is. I haven't really thought of it but like that. I mean, for me, it's been like a, a little trip down memory lane with uh, all the other Irish winners. You know, I found one of the things about this particular show, I think Ireland is the only country that could do it because we're the only people that have this many winners who are still breathing, who are still alive and who are capable of doing it and I think uh, it's, uh, it's been really really interesting because of, not just because of doing our own songs but also one of my favourite parts of the show is doing all the songs from Ireland that didn't, didn't you know, win but back in the 60s like one of the guys sings Butch Moore's song and I sing a song by Red Hurley and, this is really interesting for me because they're still great songs. They're great to sing, they're singer songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also had the opportunity to sing a Euphoria by Noreen. So wow, so you're going to hear that tonight as you're well? You're going to hear that tonight as well from me. Wow. And I also got to sing in Italian. In Italian? Yep. Insieme. Insieme? Yeah, I sing a part of Insieme, I sing the chorus of Insieme, I sing the chorus of Gente de Mare, and I sing the whole of Nel Pinto de Blu. In Italian. Oh. So we're looking forward to this very much. Ah, that makes one of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Johnny Logan is not your real name. No. So uh, first of all, what's your real name? And, and my real name is Sean Sherrard, but my father was a very famous Irish singer. Um, his stage name was Patrick O'Hagan, he was an Irish tenor. Um, and when I started out my career, I was known as Sean O'Hagan. And uh, an Italian got a hold of me. And uh, he changed my name to Johnny Logan because he said it sounded more like a pop star to him. So I became Johnny Logan and then I started winning Eurovisions and everybody in Europe got to know me as Johnny Logan so I ended up being Johnny Logan. But, you but I'm still Sean. You're still Sean, okay. <laughs> so what do you want me to call Sean or Johnny? You call me whatever you want, whichever you can remember at that moment. <laughs> the Emperor of Eurovision. <laughs> <laughs> you were born in Melbourne in Australia. That's right, I was born just outside Melbourne. Do you feel like to be an Australian? No, or to I'm be a Paddy. I'm a Paddy. I mean, I carry an Australian passport and an Irish passport, but I've always been there. I've always been there. My parents, my father came from Derry, from the north of Ireland. My mother came from Kilkenny, and my life has been spent in Ireland. You know, it's, uh, I went to Australia, and it's a lovely feeling. It's a lovely country. It's, you know, I love the people. I, love, I, I loved being there, but I'm, I'm, I'm a Paddy. Well, so many Irish people uh, being abroad of Ireland, uh, the expat communities. Um, there's a huge uh, contingency, contingency in, in uh, Australia. Are, are you uh, plan, planning to have a career there, or you have a career there? But at this stage, I plan to have a career whenever I can have a career. This is uh, my, my career at the moment. It's phenomenal when you consider you know, the amount of years that I've been in this, considering the first Eurovision was 32 years ago. And at the moment, uh, I've just come off the back of double platinum albums. Last year, the other album was The Nature of Love. It was number six in the Swedish charts. On uh, the 4th of January next year, I will have an album that was already double platinum all through Scandinavia called The Irish Connection. That will be released in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and TV advertised on uh, TV Direct and RTL, ZDF, all over Germany, all over the place. I will have two albums next year advertised, TV advertised in Germany, and I will also my new album, which I did in January of this year, 2012, uh, will be uh, The Irish Connection 2, uh, it's called The Irish Soul. That will be released in Norway on the 2nd of January, so I will have simultaneously two mm -hmm. different albums going in different parts of Europe. I think there's uh, anybody who's been around 32 years in the music industry and can say something like this and say their TV advertised album. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's a great boast to have. It's amazing. Well, I came across one of your albums, in, uh, Irishman in New York. And Irishman in America. Uh, in America, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really amazing. And I think you, you sang that okay. together with your, your sons? My sons I brought in on the last song that was called Irishman in America because my father used to, uh, on that same album, there's a song called Dancing with My Father, mm -hmm. which was dedicated to my father. You know, like this was, uh, I wanted to write something about him that, sort of ex that said how much I loved him. You know, so that, that was the song that I wrote. And at the end of it, my, my father used to tour as a singer in uh, America with a show called Ireland on Parade. Mm -hmm. And he sang for three American presidents, for John F. Kennedy, for Richard Nixon, and for Lyndon B. Johnson, in the White House. And I always remember his stories about touring America. And uh, 
I was in New York and I was looking around at the size of the buildings and it was in the middle of winter, it was very cold. Not in the, with the wind chill factor was the coldest thing. And I was thinking about the Irish people that left all the open spaces to go and work in the cities and to build buildings. And uh, that's where it all came from when I wrote this song about uh, an, Irish, uh, an Irish man in America. Beautiful album, I can really recommend that. Thank you. We played it on our show quite quite Thank you. Uh, and some of the songs and they're beautiful. Thank you. Um, on the new album, The, uh, the Irish Soul, there's a song dedicated to my mother, she died last year, called Ellen Song, mm. which is a, it's very much an Irish album. Uh, all the, there's Ilan pipes and Irish whistles and mm. fiddles on it, but it's also done with Hammond organ, electric guitars. And there's a lot of stuff, original, there's three original songs that I've written, but there's also songs by the Folds and Van Morrison. I think people, younger people will find this very interesting. I nice. hope. Yeah. Okay, so we looking forward to to hear that album as well. So, and of course, all the music you do is, is really fantastic. Thank you very much. Really nice. Um, let's turn back to Eurovision. When did it start for you that you actually got to Eurovision? And, and did you ever thought you were going to be the ambassador for your country? No, no, absolutely not. I mean, when I got the first Eurovision in 1980, um, in 1979, I'd written a song called Angie. It was uh, originally called Andy. But they had me change the name to Angie. The art, Irish television made me change the name because they said that it sounded like a gay song. Yeah. Um, and I thought, like, so this, it was very strange, but yeah. the rules were the rules in the time, and I was very strict and a uh, different world now. But I think that uh, when I wrote um, Andy or San Angie, as it became known, it came third in the National Song Contest, and suddenly I, I appeared in public in Ireland. And Shay Healy saw me and asked me the next year to sing What's Another Year. And it was one year later, the rest is history. And he was in The Hague. The Hague in Holland. And we have actually a little present for you, which we're going to give you. Maybe our cameraman is just going to swing it over now. To remind you of, of your victory in the Netherlands, Whoa. it's uh, a little packet of, of uh, straw buffets. Do you know what straw that is? Straw buffets? No. Uh, it's, it's there you go. Ah, oh, thank you. That's typical Dutch. So I'll have to call my friend Tony <laughs> Nave and just say I've got a pack of straw baffles. <laughs> so what, great. what are your memories for from, from winning the contest back in 1980? In, in, in oh, every, oh, it's all very vivid to me. I mean, all of the Eurovisions, all three of them. What's, maybe all four, including Luxembourg. And even Luxembourg was more stood in the background. Um, it's, uh, you know, like you don't go through something like the Eurovisions, particularly back in the 80s, I mean, when there were orchestras, and it was such a huge thing around Europe without like sort of every moment being uh, very vivid in your head. And, and I remember sitting on stage uh, while people were getting their makeup on. I sat on the stage and watched the audience come in. And the reason I did this was because when I went out in front of the cameras, I didn't want to be shocked by seeing the audience for the first time live on TV. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see the audience before. And it was a very good move because I wasn't shocked by it. And it allowed me to feel a lot more comfortable, I think, mm -hmm. than the other artists. And I remember being in the dressing room, the dressing uh, downstairs underneath the dressing room, which was like a gymnasium, with the sax player Colin Tully, and we were playing Danny Boy, he was playing and I was singing it, and the two of us got very emotional, we just wired ourselves up and wired ourselves up, we went onto the stage and, and I won it and my life changed, I went from travelling in, in a bandwagon with five other guys squashed together and sweaty all over the place to being driven in show, show for drum and limousines all over Europe. Amazing. Wow. Would you do it again to come back to your vision to sing it? Um, and, and I was songs? asked by a, I was asked by a very a country that has a lot of success in the Eurovision to be involved uh, this year. But um, I, I, to be honest, I actually thought about it. I, didn't, I can't say I dismissed it out of out of hand. But uh, I have to be realistic. I have a, a one. You know, I have such a perfect record yeah. at the Eurovision that I'd be very loath to take a chance in damaging that. Um, so I would have to believe really, really strongly in anything that I would do. Mm -hmm. And I would have to also, you know, the way the Eurovision is, is set up now at the moment, it is so reflective of where the music industry is. Like, it's so reflective of X Factor and pop stars that everything is with backing tracks. And the artists look like they just stepped into X Factor. Or they mm. You know, last year, not last year, the year before last in Dusseldorf, it looked like everybody had sent their pop stars entry or X Factor entry to the contest. And, uh, you know, it's not that that is beneath me, it's just that I find it a little bit. It's not something that I'm particularly interested in being involved in. Um, if they brought back the orchestras or back live music in there, 
then I think I might be, uh, it would be easier for me to make a decision. We hope you come back. Thank you in, very in much. In one way, either as a performer or as a songwriter yeah. for, for your vision. And uh, no, you, you wrote the uh, um, song by me for Linda Martin. Do you still work together with Linda Yes, Martin? well, we're working on the show. On but, the, but yeah. writing songs for her? I haven't. I, at the moment, I'm very busy writing for myself. But uh, I have been asked uh, by some people to write. I'm thinking very seriously about doing something like that. Perfect. We could chat on and on. Yes, but, but I think I have to go and, for, for go and put some makeup on and put, get into my clothes for the show, I think, and then sort of maybe rehearse a little bit of Italian. Fantastic. Great to see you again. It's great to see you. Good. Actually, you're looking very well. You're not aging. <laughs> With Island. <laughs> Thank you very much.